A CNN anchor just got a rude wake-up call to reality, and it was a beautiful sight to see. I know you guys are objective over there, that you just report the news as it is. <laughs> oh, I know, a CNN makes a... I know Was that supposed to be a laugh line? I wasn't supposed to be, but uh, I guess it is. Why, why, why are people laughing at the thought of us being objective? Because you're not, Karen, and you're a lying propagandist for a network that has proven itself to be dishonest to the American people for as long as it was instituted. This, as there's a major wake-up call to the fallacies of the corporate media, especially with the Twitter space that just happened between Donald Trump and Elon Musk that some people say has already garnered, quote, a billion views. Is that the truth here. What are the larger ramifications of this cornerstone moment that's going to be, of course, reverberating and playing in the minds of the corporate media from now on? Well, that's exactly what we are going to be discussing here, as of course, we could say now that the legacy media is on the ropes. And we just had a major moment that I would say is akin to the first ever publicly televised presidential debates that saw an ever so sweaty and nervous Richard Nixon be defeated by F. Kennedy as, of course, this first ever televised debate changed the world of politics. And I think, not being too kind of grandiose or sensationalistic here, we also have something very similar when it comes to the internet open and honest long-form conversations that, of course, aren't scripted and carefully curated by marketing and PR agencies. This moment of, of truth, this moment of reality is something that, of course, is imperfect, something that isn't, of course, polished, but it is something that is galvanizing a huge ton of attention, which is going directly after the fake fabricated market that the corporate media wants you to consume, regardless of your ability to discern fact from fiction. This, as it's fair to say, there's a huge media bias happening right now, especially when you look at the corporate media organizations that do have a horse in the race and clearly love one political ideology and despise another one that they are trying to undermine and warp people's minds against. And this year's political season, I think, will be the determining factor to where media will go from here. Will it still be artificially propped up by the establishment, by the corporatocracy, by the globalist, by the powers that be, or will they finally meet their demise with a more kind of populist, more kind of fresh air, more kind of new entertainment information renaissance that is happening that I think was encapsulated in last night's Twitter space. As of course, every time you go to the corporate media, their propaganda now is just becoming more and more lazy. Look at their depiction of Kamala Harris saying it's her moment. And then look at this depiction of Donald Trump, an emoji that's melting away with the tagline meltdown. As, as I think it's fair to say, that's not fair coverage. That's not you being unbiased. That's you playing political favorites here. And people are sick of that. People are sick of you telling us what you want, what you think is better for everyone in the general population that is just utterly sick of the current status quo that you guys have established that is leading to the utter decay of Western civilization. Another example is CBS's news coverage of the political idea of eliminating taxes on tips, which, of course, uh, just, just for the note here, Ron Paul was, was talking about for a very long time, but Donald Trump has now instituted it as one of his major campaign promises. CBS News decided to report on this by saying former President Donald Trump vows to stop taxing tips would cost the federal government up to $250 billion over 10 years, according to a nonpartisan watchdog group. I thought... The honest, more real headline here would be they would stop the federal government from stealing $250 billion from its constituents. But again, we're not dealing with an honest news organization. We're dealing with a propaganda organization that decided to highlight Kamala Harris stealing Donald Trump's campaign promise that he took from Ron Paul by saying Vice President Kamala Harris is rolling out a new policy position saying she'll fight to end taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. Yes. Oh, yeah. 
go slay black queen. Yeah, great idea. Oh, Trump, you got the same one. Horrible, awful, bad money, money government need to steal from you because you think the general population is too stupid to discern your absolute despise of the truth, which of course is perfectly represented by the corporate media that also isn't really happy as there was negative headline after negative headline about last night's Twitter space. And with the larger ramifications, I could absolutely understand why, as Elon Musk tweeted, a wall of negative headlines was so predictable. They're such NPCs. All this does is drive even more people to listen to the conversation themselves and realize how much legacy media lies to them. And the headlines are vast and they're pretty big. The Atlantic wrote, Elon Musk throws a Trump rally. USA Today, Trump rambles, slurs his way through Elon Musk interview. It was an unimagined disaster. New York Times, a two-hour ramble. CNN, Trump made at least 20 false claims in this conversation. CNN, like watching grumpy old men, columnist on Trump's ex-conversation. An article after article just highlights the larger kind of insecurity, the larger kind of last breaths of an old outdated propaganda machine that has finally met its match and is being utterly defeated by the huge numbers of individuals that are tuning away from the programming, that are tuning away from what they want you to know and deciding to, of course, decipher facts themselves by listening to free-form, long conversations that aren't scripted, that go off in multiple different directions depending on wherever the conversation wants to go naturally. This uh, CNN, I think, uh, takes the cake here as they have been dealing with larger financial problems for a very long time now, as their losses are estimated to be in the billions of dollars as they are literally throwing it away. As even their own network boss says that they face an existential crisis, as they're even discussing a plan to switch away from cable television themselves. As of course, who else would tune in to this kind of crap and biased coverage that, of course, uh, people automatically discern as fake news. And with 40 minutes of silence and then a apocalypse of politics, no matter how you frame it or what caused the glitch, what was finally said between Donald Trump and Elon Musk at last night's Big X event can largely be defined as a rant filled with familiar lies and lines of attack. Yeah, it was such a disaster that we're all talking about it now. And they lied. They always lied. Look, here's some of their lies. Kamala wouldn't have this conversation. She can't because she's not smart. No. <laughs> you know, she's not a smart person. She is a radical left San Francisco liberal. And now she's trying to protect. Now she's looking like she's she wants to be more Trump than Trump, if that's possible. I don't think it's possible. But she wants to be more Trump than well, Trump. She's terrible. But she's getting a free ride. All right. But did it do what it was designed to do, which was to put the brakes on Harris's momentum? This is, a, I, I think it's fair to say that last night was an overall, even though it started off pretty bumpy, an overall kind of success, not just for Twitter, but also Donald Trump, which of course the corporate media is not really happy about. As it's also important to note here that uh, Elon Musk officially also invited Kamala Harris on an X space to talk for a number of hours with him on the issues in a totally unscripted way. Now, will Kamala Harris actually do this? Well, she's been essentially shying away from a lot of interviews, a lot of unscripted questions, and she hasn't been doing that much media, especially for a candidate that's running for a political office. She hasn't been doing Q&As. She's not taking random questions that are off script. And uh, that's because she's not really that much of a media polished politician. A lot of the times when she is being interviewed, there are kind of uncomfortable moments that a lot of people are kind of left with wondering, wait, what? What was just going on here? Why? Huh? Why? Why? Why is she laughing? Cackling? Why is there cackling now? As of course, uh, I, I think it's fair to say that she probably will not be doing any kind of long form podcast, unscripted conversations, as of course that would be her larger kind of Achilles heel. A lot of politicians who have to remember the lines that they're told to remember and regurgitate aren't as good, especially the longer an interview goes when it comes to being on a script. The longer you have to read a script, the more difficult it is to read one. And therefore, that's why I believe Kamala Harris will not be doing any kind of long form interviews at any time and moment, especially with Elon Musk, even though it would be advantageous 
advantageous for her to do so. This is Donald Trump is saying that there was an all-time record broken that should be talked about by the fake news, but isn't. As Elon Musk says, combined views of the conversation with Donald Trump and the subsequent discussion by other accounts now, quote, one billion. Now, again, I haven't been able to independently verify this myself, but there was 1.3 million concurrent viewers last night watching the conversation. And that's absolutely huge, especially for an online social media website. We're not talking about a national broadcast. We're talking about one website that crashed during the beginning of it, which some people believe was an underhanded, quote, inside job by some sinister forces out there. But before getting into that, again, if this is true, if there's one billion views as CNN is losing viewers, as less and less people are tuning into the corporate media, and this one single media platform just got one billion views, this is a huge warning to all of the larger fake news corporate legacy media out there that their time has come and they're becoming more irrelevant than ever. And it's a beautiful sight to see as, of course, a lot of these people are delusional. A lot of these people are not living in reality. A lot of these people are just absolutely jaded and out of touch with the current reality, as we saw highlighted by Caitlin Collins from CNN, where viewers of Stephen Colbert's show are even laughing at the idea of her network being objective, which clearly they are not. Now, there's other talking points right now as Laura Trump is coming out and blaming some sinister, powerful government forces for hacking and attacking Twitter, as Elon Musk reported that there was a larger DDoS attack on the social media platform that, of course, prevented it from starting on time as the show was supposed to start at 8 p.m eastern there was difficulties from people being able to get on the actual platform and then after 30 plus minutes we finally were able to of course log in and listen to the many hour conversation uh, between the two individuals as laura trump is coming to the conclusions that there was some effort put on by government forces in order to stop this conversation and with the way that the corporate media has been underhanded along with of course the doj the fbi the other intelligence agencies it wouldn't surprise me if that's the case here as of course this was a major 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 moment in american politics and media that i think will have severe ramifications for all of those people that are tightly trying to control the narrative that they're losing control of. As again, the intel agencies haven't been unbiased here as well, as they, of course, have their own political side that they want to win in this political cycle. This is very rarely do we actually get a recall or actual accountability for the current administration that's able to do a lot of underhanded things against the American people as today. The New York Post is reporting that a Biden program meant to remove illegal migrant families has actually allowed 90% of them to stay inside of the United States. As, of course, Elon and Donald Trump largely also talked about the problems of immigration during their Twitter space. As Elon Musk discussed, if the Democrats win this political cycle, that America no longer will be a country, especially with their open immigration policies that they have instituted, that they will only expand from here. As he said, quote, I'm not sure we've got a country if open borders persist for another four years. And uh, I agree with him, as Donald Trump even joked about suggesting he would flee to Venezuela if he loses the election because it's, quote, much safer there after describing a situation where the Venezuelan government is being accused of sending most of their hardened criminals up north to the United States through the parse American border. Now, whatever you might think of Elon Musk or, or Donald Trump, whatever questions you might have of them, it's, it's pretty interesting to also understand that a lot of people in the establishment are panicking, are really scared, are really pissed off. And they're doing a lot of really underhanded things to try to stop these men from being able to speak and allow you to speak openly and freely. And that moment, I believe, is worth kind of propagating. It's worth celebrating and it's worth appreciating. And if you agree with that, share this video with your friends and family members. It is more imperative than ever. The legacy media is going down.
in my opinion. And they still hold a vast amount of influence and power over the American people. But we will see what is the stronger force in just a few days from now on November 5th. Will the corporate media and their influence and sway be more powerful than the other independent media voices that are trying to have people be able to speak freely? Well, time will tell. What do you think is going to happen? Let me know down in the comment section below. Sign up to LukeUnfiltered.com and you'll be able to call in later on today as we have a very special guest coming inside of our studio. As we're going to have Billy Carson joining us uh, 6 p.m. Eastern here on this broadcast. And tomorrow, Dr. Kate Shanahan, 6 p.m. Eastern, also here on this particular broadcast. Be a part of that show by signing up to LukeUnfiltered.com. It's quick, it's easy, it's simple. And then when you do that, you get the ability to actually call into the show and be a part of the live broadcast. All you have to do is click the link right now in the description. Click right here and you can sign up for $8, $15, or $99, whatever you're comfortable joining up for you have different perks and you have different things you get for each time you sign up for a different level sign up here put in a quick amount of information you get emailed back a login you log in and you get a plethora of amazing offers of value master classes seed oil cards crap lists t-shirts that are only available for members and also a secret telegram group that is only available for members where members get to call in and be a part of the discussion you want to talk to any of these individuals you can right now now, just by simply signing up to LukeUnfiltered.com, as of course, we have amazing guests on our show. We just had Russell Brand. We had Rob Schneider. We have politicians. We have luminaries. We have so many different individuals coming in studio here talking to you guys. And that's only possible because of your support on LukeUnfiltered.com. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys doing that. And this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on YouTube.com forward slash We Are Change.